Hello, everyone. I'm James Manus, uh, Vice Mayor in Mount, of Mount Juliet, and I've got uh, Sean Donovan with with me here. We're going to be doing, uh, I think, what's going to be one of our first town halls here. Mm -hmm. So never done anything like this before. It's a new format for us. So we're just going to wing it as we go. Sean, you want to tell, tell a little about yourself, your involvement? And Hi, my name is Sean Donovan. Uh, I've lived in uh, Mount Juliet. I've been a uh, pleasure to live in Mount Juliet for the last 14 years. Uh, I've lived in, uh, actually was one of the first 50 families in Providence back in 2005, and uh, I've lived up in Willoughby Station uh, for the last, uh, going on just over four years. Um, founding member of the Fire Department of Mount Juliet, uh, so I've been really involved uh, from a, at a city level on the fire department side and uh, pretty active in the community. Um, member of the board of directors, or the HOA board um, for the Willoughby Station Homeowner Association, and uh, just very happy to be here. Yeah, appreciate well, the invite. I appreciate you taking the time to do it. I mean, this is a this is something. It's a new format. We're trying to reach out and try to do things a little different. Um, just just one of our goals is to be more in the community. Um, just provide more information, more more touch points for elected officials, and just better ways, I guess, to overall talk about the things that are going on in our city and how we can do things better, get people more involved, make it more convenient for folks. Uh, I guess just before we get started here, just a little bit about the rules, which is just be polite, no personal attacks on here. Uh, if you've got a question or something, just post a comment there. We'll try our best to answer everything, and our answer may be we just don't know yet, but we'll try our best to to address everything that pops up. Can't promise we'll get to everything, but we'll do our, definitely do our best. Uh, this is just this is kind of a, a new format, like I said, so... Uh, just kind of bear with us. Just want to let everybody know this is, um, we're just kind of a privately putting this on. There's no, obviously no taxpayer dollars in use here. So we've got the setup here. If you um, don't want to miss these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. We'll put a link down below. Definitely uh, like the page and follow it so you get updates on what's going on. And I think that's probably the easiest ways to keep up. Post a lot on social media. Uh, put the newsletter out, like I said, monthly. So it's good ways to keep uh, in touch. So let's jump right in, Sean. Okay. I think the the first thing here, and I kind of reversed <clears> the <throat> agenda today. I thought we'd have more questions on the second part. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I thought we'd just start off talking about some legislation that I put forth. Uh, just I guess about a month ago now. It's been out. It's been the email transparency, and it's just simply. Um, and I just back up with a little background on it. I ran into a, a problem where reading some stories, and of course there've been several out there, and it, it's not based on the popular rumor. That's based on the Clinton email. Nothing to do with that. Is actually actually more of a situation out of Alaska with an email system where elected officials were using personal emails to kind of circumvent sunshine laws. Mm -hmm. And we'd had some stuff going on in the city, not that people were trying to circumvent sunshine laws, but there was a neighboring city where that was the case. And so I put together just a legislation. What it called for was just banning the use of private email for conducting city business. Mm -hmm. And one of the goals was is just to keep everything in the public, public email or the city-provided email where it was archived, logged. And if somebody had a public records request, they could make it, and we would always have that on plan, on hand. Yeah, excellent. And when it when it came about, I think mm -hmm. on first reading, when it came about, it got amended to include texting, which got into a whole new can of worms, if you'll say. Mm -hmm. Got into a lot of uh, questions about the cost, uh, retention, and our IT director did a good job of looking it up. But right now it's in workshop. I just wanted to make people aware of where it is. It's in a workshop, and... I may reintroduce the uh, legislation, bring it back just in its own form, because there's no cost to it. Mm -hmm. It was an easy fix. And I don't know if you've had any experience where just, I know you've worked for several municipalities mm -hmm. before, and if Absolutely. you've seen situations like that where public records request are. Well, and I just think it's a good, uh, basically, business tool uh, that we offer. You know, every, the city employees all get uh, email, including elected mm -hmm. officials. Elected officials. Um, so they all get emails provided to them as part of their uh, office. Um, that and, in, in, say, cell phones and things like that. And I just think it's good business practice to utilize those services. And you don't really naturally, you don't necessarily need to have your private um, accounts when you're being provided these things. And it's like you said, um, 
just having these emails that are open to public record, even if you're not doing anything wrong necessarily. It's all it's still a transparency issue. If somebody wants to ask a question, uh, Freedom of Information Act or things like that, it gives that that taxpayer uh, an avenue. Uh, but there's no trans. It's all transparency. So. Yeah, and then, I mean, you mentioned elected officials have it, uh, planning commission members have it as mm-hmm. well, which on the website, uh, jamesmace.com, under the calendar section, I post the planning commission meetings under there and have the web, uh, excuse me, the email addresses for all the members on there. It's mm-hmm. just as a point of contact for po- people to leak, reach out on. It's also a, a form of protection, I think, for um, employees, elected officials, by not interjecting or bringing that private email account into that it's it's yeah. a point where if there was a uh, legal action taken mm-hmm. kind of protects you from having your somebody come after your email if it's all there in one spot to look exactly. for exactly and it's just like i said it's it's a transparency issue like you that to which the direction of the, the legislation in a sense was you know the transparency not to say that you know we believe anybody's doing anything wrong like you we've talked before uh, but it's simply just a transparency issue to for the elected officials and the city's employees. so Yeah, and, and you know, transitioning on to our next item, but just um, going into that, I'll leave it with this. We've got some other things that I'm working on for us, transparency issues, perhaps even revisiting some other things that we have out there, and I've, I've contacted some things. So there, there'll be more to come on that, mm-hmm. more on, more than going just maybe a little deeper than email, but I think there's some other places that we can sure up and just provide it. Well... I don't know. I don't see any questions on that one. So if uh, if you like, we can, I think we should probably just move on to the next issue, which is the Devonshire Villas. And this one has got some history to it. Lots of history. And um, hopefully we'll, we're seeing a good plan that we're looking at tonight that uh, I hope a lot of the residents in District 2 are happy with um, from looking at it so far. So. Well, we're going to see a plan at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um Basically, it seems like it's it's come around. I don't know four or five times, and you know, for public record's sake, I don't think either one of. Well, gosh, I think it started back in the nineteen eighties. Was yeah, well before my time in Mount Juliet. Yeah, yeah, I was I was uh, successfully roll, enrolling in kindergarten about that time, about yeah. eighty two or so. So that's probably about yeah. the timeline we're talking about when this got started. Mm-hmm. So this this come in under county zoning, and they they called it a cluster zoning, which is a, an interesting name for it, but. It was initially set to be part of what they call Phase 4 of Hickory Hills, but it's, you know, Hickory Hills is built out, the HOA's in place, all those covenants are done, they're sealed, they're in place, and, you know, what, what gets developed up there, if it gets developed at all, mm-hmm. is going to be a separate separate entity. And what the what the landowner has brought back now is is a little bit different request. If, if you remember, gosh, I don't know, f- six months or so ago, yeah. There was a proposal brought brought before the planning commission for uh, townhomes, and they were requesting an amendment to the land use plan, which was mm-hmm. to change what it's currently under in the land use yeah. to something that would fit the townhomes on it. And, of course, that was not adopted and actually voted by the planning commission not to make any changes there. Mm-hmm. So that put a one-year moratorium on it, so they can't bring back that land use amendment to do multifamily. So what they've come back with here is another prob- another process another product Mm -hmm. and it's going to be residential in nature so it would not be a multifamily zoning on it and just just to back up if i'm probably confusing people out here what we're talking about but there's actually a couple of boards that are involved in this process i serve on the mount juliet board of commissioners so i'm an elected to represent district two and there's four commissioners we each have our own districts and i was elected to represent district two and from the four commissioners, one of them was selected to be vice mayor, and that was me. So we also have one at large, which is the mayor. So that's the board of commissioners, which sets the budget, uh, makes changes to our ordinances, and does the annexations and rezones. Mm-hmm. That's the role of the board of commissioners. Now, in this case, what we're talking about here is a change to rezone, which has to go before the planning commission, the regional planning commission first. That's a nine-member board. These are not elected members except for the one that represents by the Board of Commissioners, which is just simply one of the commissioners. So in this Mm -hmm. case, it's a District 3 commissioner serves on the Planning Commission. The other eight positions are all appointed by the mayor. So that's what we have here. We have a nine-member board called Mm -hmm. the Planning Commission, 
and they're in charge of oversight of what we call the land use plan. Mm -hmm. And the land use plan that currently covers this area is called medium density. But, and, you know, originally I think what, what the plan was in there did fall under medium density. Currently, the current zoning falls under high density. Of course, they're grandfathered in under that. That's RS10, which means residential single family, 10,000 foot lots. Mm-hmm. Or 10,000 square foot lots. Mm-hmm. That'd be a hot lot if we went 10,000 feet. <laughs> <It's> very big. <laughs> Put some 10, guide 000. towers in there for the planes. Yeah, for but sure. But 10,000 square foot lots is what it's what it's going to be. RS10 is what they're currently zoned for. Mm-hmm. And they have an approval, I want to say going back to maybe 86, to develop that as residential single family. I forget the total number of homes. It's it's several that they could put on there, and that's that's approved. And it's approval for a connection from Devonshire all the way over to Sydney Terrace, mm-hmm. down to Brownstone. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're talking about a parcel of land. It's basically just south of St. Stephen's Church off mm-hmm. Lebanon Road, but that's approved there. And before they can ask for a rezone, there has to be a change to the land use plan. And the only board that can change the land use plan is the planning commission because yeah. they control that. So they'll have to get it changed from medium density to high density. If they were after, when they were after the townhomes, they were seeking a change from medium density to multifamily. The product they're bringing forth now is not a multifamily prod- product. It is a residential product, meaning going from RS10 to R10, which is residential, 10,000 square foot lot, essentially dropping the single family piece off of it. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And, and when they say this is the Devonshire Villas, and I'll switch over to the, um, to the monitor here. Devonshire Villas, which is really a fancy word for, I, I think, home. most people will know it as. <laughs> as a home. Townhomes. Townhomes. I'm not, excuse me, not townhomes. I'm messing it up here. It's not oh. townhomes. It's, it's um, duplexes. Yeah, technically. Du- yeah, villas. Duplexes. Yeah. Yeah. So... We're looking here, and you've got Sydney Terrace here, and it's going across here to Devonshire. And one of the things you'll notice that's a little different about this plan than what we've seen in the past is, is, you know, when they've gotten before, one of the previous plans before that, one of the things that they were really pressured to do was create that connectivity from Sydney Terrace, which was on the original plan. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that creates concerns about interjecting cut-through traffic on this. Yeah. And... Then, of course, if it didn't connect to Sydney Terrace, all the traffic coming out of this down Devonshire that was going to go towards town was going to cross across Maricord, yeah. which is a small street, which mm-hmm. would load traffic there. So to come back with this proposal, it's a little different yeah. than what we've seen in the past. It is, Instead yeah. of having public streets through here, this is a private street, which means it's gated in the sense that you cannot have cut-through traffic on it, but only the traffic leaving, and if it's going out Devonshire... Logic would tell you it probably had to Lebanon Road instead yeah. of cutting through. If it's going the other way out Sydney, it probably means it's headed towards, towards MJE. Yeah, M- modulate, yeah, the schools. Yeah, MJE Providence, mm-hmm. somewhere in that direction, going east. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're looking at here on this one. So let's talk about the path forward on this and what and what we uh, anticipate happening, which is they will put this on the November twenty first planning commission. Which is signed yesterday, or did it get signed today? Or the signs were put out today. today. Yeah, because they're due tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so that's public notification. Yeah. So those are the signs that everybody sees all over Devonshire right now, and all over Maricord are, are the signs for that notification for that meeting. So yes, Devonshire, and probably what you see on there's probably one at the cul-de-sac at Sydney Terrace. Mm-hmm. And since it's going to be requesting a rezone, at some point the the property owners that are adjacent to this will get notified at it too. So. Yeah. What we expect to happen on this is that they will are going to produce or present this to the planning commission. They're going to ask for the change to the land use plan from medium density to high density to support these um, villas. Mm-hmm. And at that point, the um, planning commission can choose to amend the the land use plan, and then they can they will vote to make a recommendation on the rezone. And they'll probably have a lot of other th- things if you've watch any of our planning commission meetings yeah. that they're going to they're gonna get on to, you know, as far as getting into a little bit more in the details of this plan. And I think this developer is probably intentionally putting together what I call a lean plan. Okay. And with the anticipation that some of this stuff was going to be worked on during the planning commission. 
Says, what would you say, like an adequate like time frame? Like if we're looking at it from right now, we're looking at it, planning commission to get you gotta get the vote. Then let's go to the board, mm-hmm. get a positive recommendation. So, bearing that all these things get approvals all the way through the board of commissioners, when could we possibly even see in? Uh, dirt moving for this project. Would you oh say? wow, that's uh, that if is hard to say. Like a, a guesstimate. Oh, I would I would imagine that if they were gonna if they had all the approvals in place, mm-hmm. I would imagine you wouldn't see anything until we have some warmer weather. Yeah, at the least. So we're looking probably about at least a if least it a year or so. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, just just making assumptions yeah. that they got the approvals and all through all that and. Everybody was good to go with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would have to line up a builder, and you know they they've talked about having a builder in place in the past. But actually talking about having the builder and having the builder ready to go that doesn't mean they're on another project. So yeah, it's really hard. And I mean it's it's probably really early on in this process to say because and even the land prep too. Not to interrupt you, the land prep oh, just definitely. for that parcel um, is hilly. It is is for most people who live at um, at the end of Sydney Terrace there who. I live adjacent to this uh, project. It's you know, just getting it uh, build ready. I guess oh, yeah. to prep the prep the site is going to be a task in, in itself. You yeah, know? infrastructure improvements, mm-hmm. and I mean we're going to put some conditions on it through the city if it if it, it's approved to move forward. There'll be conditions put on it, and, mm-hmm. uh, dealing with stormwater issues coming off of it. Hopefully, improving that. Um, just making sure that uh, the biggest pro I think about this project is. What you see here is all the green space, the trees in the north mm-hmm. and the south of this, making sure that's conditionally locked away so it's gonna it's gonna stay that through the twenty six acres is gonna stay wooded. Yeah. Wooded parcel on this thing and make sure it gets locked up as part of this project. Mm-hmm. Because without that, I mean it's it's just another just another townhome. Just another project. Yeah. Well, villa. Well, and I know from the Willoughby Station uh community, you know, we're looking at with Sydney Terrace having a, a townhome um development like this uh, even with the private entrance you're still gonna have the traffic going down sydney terrace um like we've discussed and um right now sydney terrace doesn't have any things like sidewalks and things right. like that your major safety concerns for uh, the neighbors um especially the ones who live in sydney terrace who have a lot and there's a lot of kids who live in on uh, sydney terrace and i know that's one one of the things that they would like to see um is seeing sidewalks and things definitely. like that definitely to make it which you know from a, a recreational standpoint even you know, putting the sidewalks linking up to our new greenways and things like that um, would be good for the neighborhood, I think. so. Yeah, I mean, it, um, there is some sidewalks proposed on this, and right now I think that's mostly aimed at Devonshire. Okay. And probably I think the reason it's left at Devonshire is just simply because that's where the right-of-way is, is owned. Okay. Uh, to go down Sydney Terrace, you know, I think the first step to do is make sure we have public right-of-way to even – to do we that can do yeah. it and then it gets into a, a question of are you going to build on private property and mm-hmm. imminent domain or i yeah. you know there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of unanswered questions there when it starts Absolutely. going down there but that's not those are answerable questions those are yeah. questions of can it be done is there right away how much utilities would have to be moved what would be the cost to do it mm-hmm. i mean those are those are questions that can get answered in the process for sure of course, the other thing is I've been trying to find out is the traffic count. Has there been the traffic traffic count, a traffic study on it? Yeah. How much traffic would they expect one way versus the other way? Mm-hmm. The times of days. One of the things I pushed the developer to do was try to make this a uh, age restricted community mm-hmm. so that we would get alternating traffic patterns yeah, and absolutely. to keep the um, keep the impact down on the school systems. Yeah, if it's you're looking at say fifty five and older community mm-hmm. similar to. Some of the things they have on the south side, um, south side of town, like the Lake Providence, and some of those areas that are age restrictive, that less res- less impact on the schools and everything. So, yeah. all right. So I guess, like I said, the plan, the move, the path forward would be it go to the planning commission, assuming it got a positive approval there. As long as the land use plans amended they could move forward with a request for the rezone. Okay. Even if they got negative staff recommendation and negative planning commission recommendation, still go to the BOC, Board of Commissioners, mm-hmm. could vote on it that way. Take two readings. There's one meeting in December. It would make it for that, and then we'd see it back on second in reading January. in January. That's that's anticipating a lot going mm-hmm. along that way. So yeah. I don't think it would go that quickly or smoothly, really. 
Yeah, with a lot of the some of the issues, uh, the un, unknowns, as you as you said, on some of the different things from storm water and and those things. That a lot of answer, a lot of things we need to answer before we can get the approvals, like you said. Yes. So. So, um, I mean, just to kind of some of the things I hit on and ask the questions I was asking about today with the developers, kind of what's the um, what's the square footage you're looking at trying to target in these, and they're seeking about 1,800 square feet. So, the next question was, what's your what do you expect your target selling point to be, your average selling point for these mm-hmm. properties? And the answer was, they hope to have an average of about 300k on these. So. Just kind of gives you mm-hmm. a little feel for what they're planning to put in there, which would be definitely beneficial to the neighborhood, especially with property values and everything mm-hmm. else. You have high end uh, villas uh, going in that area; it would definitely be beneficial to both Hickory Hills and um, Willoughby Station. Um, so, and one of the other things that's talked about with the with the private, with the private streets, gated communities, was being part of the covenants there in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know by by law already. We're going to have emergency access through that, uh, quicker access to fire, or if you had an emergency at the bottom of the hill, there's mm-hmm. Sydney Terrace that would provide access through there. Um, that's already. But going in with that, if we got into a condition where we had bad weather, uh, mm-hmm. icy conditions on the roads or something on the hill, and there was a need to leave, that that could be opened up to allow people mm-hmm. on top of the hill a second way out at that point. Yeah, absolutely. So... That's kind of where we're at. I mean, just the, I think the other thing is, is it's by no means, I, I, you know, the last time it's come out here, I really didn't say much to people when it come out and, you know, people are kind of like, well, we didn't know anything about it. And I was, you know, I was fairly certain that had probably less than 1% chance of passing. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I mean, it didn't, didn't get off go at the planning commission. So yeah. that one was kind of what I expected. This one, I, I give it a, slightly better chance of getting some traction and moving and from uh, everybody who's lived in you know if i'm talking to some of the other re- residents who live in willoughby station um they're saying this is probably one of the top plans they've seen for the, a lot of them who've lived here for a number of years say um from what we're seeing so far it looks like it's a it's a very good plan for the uh land um that was a lot more beneficial than what we've seen in the past so yeah i mean and that's that's a good that's a good point you make there too if if we get into a situation where we can't agree on a path forward with with something on a new plan mm-hmm. uh, one of the things that that everybody has by right and 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 for me by right means the property that I own here my home yeah I have a right to do something with this property right now I have a home on it and you know when I want to go somewhere else I'm gonna I want to sell it mm-hmm. now the the developer, it's no different by right. They have rights that they can do with that land. And right now it's already got an approval. And I think that's one of the questions somebody was asking is what, when I spoke about there's been some homes approved on there, mm-hmm. and I'm beyond, I don't remember what was approved, but it was. Yeah, I don't remember. I, if either. I remember correctly, and this is going back, and, and the reason to kind of dis, disregard that is, is, Right now, it's just not financially feasible, I don't think, to develop that on that property. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the danger if we don't do anything on it. It's potential danger. I'm not trying to scare somebody into a plan, doomsday, but, yeah. yeah, I'm not doing doomsday. But we've seen we've seen parcels in this city that, that wouldn't develop in the past because of the cost. As property values, as the price of land goes up, mm-hmm. we could potentially see somewhere down the road, I mean, probably not in the next five or six, seven, eight years, but we could potentially see somewhere down the road that this could potentially develop under the old plan. Yeah. I think it's unlikely. It's take a lot of work to do it with the slopes. Mm-hmm. They couldn't do it to what was approved to the level they were approved there. But they did have some townhomes, I believe, on the front and single family back to the back. And I could if I remember right, I can't remember yeah. the, exactly the, the whole details on the old plan, yeah. Yeah. Or the current the, one anyway. I mean, we're we're talking about a plan from back in the eighties now, but mm-hmm. it's it's out there and that's by right what they have the rights to develop today on that land. Yeah. Just go pull the permits and get going as long as they meet the town, meet the codes to do it. Mm-hmm. So what they're trying to do is come up with a compromise that they can do something on yeah, and try to keep as many people happy in the process, which is keeping excess cut through traffic off Sydney Terrace, which mm-hmm. I think was a, and at the same time, not interjecting additional traffic on Maricourt, yeah, which absolutely. is a smaller street down there. Mm-hmm. So that was time to compromise with trying to make it, uh, a gated. Now, 
will it get will it have the muster it takes to get through the planning commission you know with the amount of amenities in this thing they're definitely not um bad taste or anything like that at home mm-hmm. but they're just there's no there's no exactly wow factor put to them they yeah. have an amenity package but it, it it's it's not something that you're going to ride home about you'd probably be very happy to live there but mm-hmm. it's probably not going to be an exact selling point for it yeah absolutely and that's kind of the concern that i get into with it so, like, my I guess my whole point with saying all that is, is, you know, that they own the land and they have the rights to do something mm-hmm. with it, and it's going to fall back to the last approval. They're asking for a change to it at this point. Well, and that's the city in general. A lot of people don't understand that the, with the land use plan is they can build pretty much whatever they want to uh, in a lot of ways as long as it's developed within the current yeah, whatever um, they have the approval zoning for. Which is RS, RS10 underlay, which mm-hmm. is residents single family 10,000 square feet. Yeah. And this will be a change to just residential 10,000 square feet, mm-hmm. which essentially is meaning that they're getting two two properties per lot, which is mm-hmm. the townhomes. I keep saying townhomes, townhomes. the villas. The villas. Right. We don't keep have, saying, we don't have a lot of those. Homes, but yeah, we don't have any things, too many things that are called a villa. <laughs> we don't have a lot Mount of those Juliet, in Mount no. Juliet, so it's kind of different. It's unique. That might be a selling point. It's unique because it's the first <laughs> thing called a villa. <laughs> We've had proposals in, in the past, but I don't I don't. But think... nothing that's got to approved, right? Yeah. So, so it might be a perhaps, selling point. Perhaps if this made it all the way through, I could get through by the time it was <laughs> through the approvals, get saying villa and still calling it town hall. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, let's, let's see. Let's take a look here at some, uh, see if there's any questions. I know yeah, they are. Let's see. Got one from Rachel. Says, so the villa would be a gated community? Uh, yes, gated on both ends. Uh, they're uh, seeking private streets. Actually, the private streets lets them do some things with parking that they couldn't do on public streets, and it would cut down, obviously, on the cut-through traffic to Sydney Terrace being gated, or stop cut-through traffic, I guess would be the right way to say it. Got another question from Ryan. It's another one about private. It's going to be private. Uh, let's see. If the connection is going to be private, it is only going to increase traffic going east, not decrease it. Has there been any talk about connecting City Terrace to Maricourt to decrease the traffic coming east? Hmm. I don't know how you would do. I don't know how you would do that. Uh, other than if you went through. Is it Halifax Drive or one of those areas? Uh, That's probably even Brownstone more. Or... Yeah, that'd probably even be a harder uh, land development if you look at, if you go on that. If you actually go through the Hickory Hills and that actual parcel, um, that might even be a harder uh, connection than what you have currently. Yeah, and the, the problem going through Halifax is, is right at the end of Halifax is that is big a, a detention big bond. pond. Yeah. yeah, there's a big pond back there. I think Brownstone will be your only entry point. Mm-hmm. And that would basically be like coming off Sydney and making a 90 and going straight down at yes, that point. Uh, that's pretty much what it would be. But to answer the question, no, there's not really been any talks about connecting it back to Sydney Terrace. And I kind of feel I'm missing the point of the question, but um, just with it being gated on both ends of the community, mm-hmm. um, we don't expect it to interject any additional traffic that's cutting through. Obviously, t- people that live there that would leave that would be living. Mm-hmm. Well, excuse me, live live there that would be leaving heading east. That's a lot of L's. Yeah, heading east would increase some traffic. Yeah, too. I don't think you're well. But that's the biggest sell. Uh, one of those big points there is that being a gated community and private, you're not going to have a lot of cut through traffic into Sydney Terrace. You're only going to have those those eighty homes. Um, but like you mentioned earlier, um, it's hard to do a traffic study to kind of figure out exactly what the flows would be uh if you looked at so many trips per day i know that was talked about um if you average how many trips come out of one household per day but there's so many variables in there to actually figure out how much traffic is going on sydney terrace versus going down with devonshire <laughs> somebody just texted me the uh original drawing i don't i don't know we can try to get that up here for the ends. <laughs> I can imagine what that. It's probably even not even <laughs> close to what it looks like now, right? Oh my goodness! It's like this screen here. It's just like basically, and I say this screen. We don't have the map up right now, but um, talking about all this wooded area, it's just 
it's just all houses just going straight from Halifax down, brownstone up, tying back in. Mm-hmm. I think up here at the top, they were looking at some multifamily pieces to it. I think that's another question Carolyn was talking about. She said the original plan had several homes. Can you please clarify the difference between several homes and what's proposed here? Uh, what's proposed here is just 80 villas. So it's basically, I think, about 40 units or 41 units total mm-hmm. is on it. So with, with two per unit, that's that's the proposal that we have here. Yeah. Versus what was proposed. I want to say it was north of 100 on the original I believe that's right, too. (laughs) And I'm hesitant to say, and I don't want to get it wrong, but we can, we can put the, we can definitely put the map up. We've, we've got what was proposed in the 80. I think I got one down the garage, about a five foot drawing of that thing. And it, it went all the way to Lebanon Road with business complexes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it it was interesting. What the picture was back in 86 versus what the actual town turned into. Yeah. I'm sure some areas were planned like they thought, but. And that gets into some of the kind of the history about the, about the town and where we where we went with development on that. Mm-hmm. If you look at what you saw back then, you you could you could see designs coming in like that, and it was like almost disregarding um, a slope and stuff because mm-hmm. they could go in and do uh, I guess mass grading was the thing, you know, just go in there and just push it all down and just mass grade the thing and put the big earth movers in there and just yes, exactly. basically take out except for all the rock that we found that's all every all the uh, limestone that's everywhere here, and you right? know talking to some of the some of the people that were around back then when providence was being planned mm-hmm. providence was planned to be a mass graded site just go in there and clear everything and yeah. just mass grade it and of course you can put in a lot more density doing that mm-hmm. but you don't have the quality of home and doing it and yeah. i i think looking at history in the hindsight on that thing it's one of the decisions that the city did very well and got got right and back in the day was was killing the mass grading i mean the environmental impacts mm-hmm. and just, just it's just a better product we see out there and you'll see that kind of reflected in that original original design with the commercial yep. out there just mass grade everything and mm-hmm. stick as much as you can in well and they, they had a more of a focus towards the green space you know trying to save as much green space which is like in this uh, proposal that we're seeing with these uh, villas um, as you mentioned, it's there's a definitely desire to hold some green space there and have some buffers and things like that. That mm-hmm. hopefully we'll see. Hey, and somebody did remember because it's here in the comments. Rebecca says it was 158 single family and 36 home uh, townhome units. Yeah. So that's closer to 200 than 100 that was the original approval. So we were way off. Yeah, well, we we're off by about by 30. half. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Megging, uh, let's see, where am I at? Uh, adding the speed humps is ideal to increase the traffic. Scary pedestrian traffic. Thanks for pointing out there's no sidewalks. Uh, let's see, Rebecca. Got a comment that says, uh, by far the best plan that we've seen. It leaves half the area green space. I'm opposed to opening Sydney Terra for any plan. If the, if the city requires connectivity, the current plan with the gated entry exit is better than the opening for the road and the cut through traffic. And cut down on that. Uh, let's see. Dan says, will Sydney Terrace residents be able to use the access for shorter travel? if coming from Hermitage. No, not if it's gated. It'll be private streets. They won't be public city streets to cut through. Which is actually a good thing if you think about it. If it's, it would be like having the townhomes on the other side of Devonshire having access. I think it, having it, uh, well, except that's, for emergency you know, that, situations. That's a good point, too, with the, um, with the townhomes of Hickory Hills, mm-hmm. which is kind of the third development that we have in this area. It's, yeah. With the townhomes of Ticker Hills coming out right across from that, mm-hmm. that's just a straight shot for them if it wasn't gated to go through yeah. Sydney Terrace. They can go straight through that entrance gate and go right out the other side, yeah. Yeah, and we want to encourage that traffic out to Lebanon Road. Let's see, Rachel. We really need a three road to connect straight. Devonshire with possibly cause issues and connecting towards the end of Mary Court would definitely leave traffic, making the rope private 
only would increase traffic going east since none of the people on Sydney Terrace would go west that would normally go to Maricourt to 70. Now, speaking of that, one of the things one of the things that, that I think contributes to some of the traffic coming back from the Willoughby Station side through mm-hmm. Maricourt to mm-hmm. go out through Devonshire yeah. is the light at the end of Devonshire. Mm-hmm. And this is something I was actually going to put in the next newsletter, but uh, one of the things it talked about was looking at what they're doing with the light realignments down at Bitten Douglas and North Green Hill, and this is getting into something that be in the next newsletter. I don't have all the all the pictures yet to display them here, but one of the things that I'd ask about to our traffic engineer was if to go back and revisit the signal warrant off South Green Hill and Dev, excuse me, South Green Hill and Lebanon Road, mm-hmm. and revisit that warrant, and because it in my mind it's obviously going to put more traffic going through Lebanon Road mm-hmm. that's currently probably being split going down Division Street and Lebanon Road to the existing high school is to get that light looked at and get the get the get the state moving on the signal warrant now so that we can get the light in place mm-hmm. and i think that's going to alleviate a lot of the pressure on Maricourt yeah. that we're seeing come through because if you're going to if you're going to come out of South Green Hill and take a left, or you got a choice of taking a left at Devonshire. Mm-hmm. It's just easier to go left where the light is, and it, exactly. I mean it's safer. Sure. I mean that's I've got I got two kids who are going to be driving the next few years, and mm-hmm. I want them taking lefts like where traffic myself, lights yeah. are. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think getting that warrant in place and getting that light in place is going to help more balance out the traffic on the exits mm-hmm. out here. That's one of the things. I mean, it's other than. We well, and that's like we said with the traffic plan of trying to determine what makes people going to out of these eighty villas, um, what's going to determine their fa- determining factors why they go one way or the other. Uh, that's just personal preference on some areas like Hickory Hills. Yeah. Um, you go down Maricourt now with uh, the stop signs and things like that that are going to be determining factors for some. Um, it just why people do the way, why they drive the way they drive is sometimes you yeah, never I, know. I'm heavily influenced never by the traffic volume that's on Lebanon Road mm-hmm. as to which way I want to turn. Sure. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carolyn asks, will the access be uh, for the gates residents only? Yes, it would be uh, residents only living in the villas. So, we'll say, love to see you talk about businesses coming to the area and status of the projects, uh, like the development tracker. That is actually something I've got planned in the future. We're probably doing some more maybe townhomes on that with a more economic development influence. Uh, probably some stuff I'll be including in the newsletter going forward. But thank you, David, for the comment. Uh, can you please post the texted images? <laughs> we, will, we will try to get them on here. Uh, we'll probably, it'll probably actually be easier to just... Do it after the fact? Get it on the website and put okay. a link to it so people can see it than trying to get it on here and them watching us live fumble around Try with to keyboard. fumble with your, with your <laughs> phone trying to get it posted on there. <clears throat> okay, and there, there's Ryan says, the reason he's asking about the east traffic is people coming down the hill would be going west if it was a straight shot oh, through. Okay. that That's true. If it was opened up, they would go most likely straight through Absolutely. out and catch the light if that was yeah, the way they were going. For sure. I think I've got, let's see, Amy, would this end the discussion on the property or you'd anticipate another? Oh, that's a good question, Amy. Uh, would I anticipate another person trying to redevelop it? That's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, for me, and I think, and I, boy, I don't want to put words in other people's mouth, but I think everybody's going to be in agreement on this as a condition of, a, of approval for this, if it makes it to that point, is is that green space be locked up in the deeds so it can't be developed in here. Um, I don't know about you, Sean, yeah. but I'm, this is a project that's just, uh, it, it's getting old talking about it, and I mm-hmm. definitely want that green space. I mean, for me, the green space would be the only thing that would make me even consider this anyway. It was just locking this away. Oh, well, absolutely. Cause it, and you, you figure the residents who lived in Willoughby Station and uh, Hickory Hills have been used to this green, you know, green space for a long time. 
and it's definitely a, a nice selling point to the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, like yeah. you said, you don't want to sit there and do a strip uh, development on here and strip all the land and take care of all the trees and all those different things when you have something like this here with the uh, with the design we're looking at with the, a lot of the green space staying in place. Uh, I think it just brings more value to the neighborhood. Yeah, and it's you know? just to me how many neighborhoods like this are, can have 26 acres just mm -hmm. locked away on this. This is a, a large track of land. Mm -hmm. I know in spots, you know, an acre of land's going for $100,000 or oh, more yeah. in spots of the city. So it's, um, it's something that, you know, a lot of us are not, a lot of us are not going to go out and buy our own 26 acres. No. And I, it's like the, the people who live on Maricourt there who back up to this this land, you know, they're they're definitely going to hope it stays green space as well. Definitely. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, going through Hickory Hills and going through this parcel, it's going to take a, a significant investment just to develop anything in that um, that parcel. I got Amy asks, what's the status on the proposed roundabout on the South Green Hill Road entrance? It's, I think it's pretty much, how do I say this? I think it's pretty much settled on terms of design. I think the next next phase you'll start looking at are probably right away, looking at right away, acquiring the right away. Mm -hmm. uh, we just voted as a board uh, budget amendment uh, to allocate the money mm -hmm. to extend the sidewalk mm -hmm. from the uh, town center trail where it's mm -hmm. ending there by the railroad tracks and bringing that up. And the money was allocated in there to extend it to um, Mount Vernon mm -hmm. and then extend it over to Willoughby Station. Yeah. And I know that was one of the things they talked about at the last HOA meeting was just kind of presenting that plan and how they wanted to try to bring that together. Yeah, and that was one of the big things that uh, Andy at uh, in planning uh, and public works discussed about the some of the design options for the roundabout. Um, uh, looking at a single lane uh, roundabout and having a connection to uh, the new greenway, um, and the new plan that they they have uh, drawn out looks very it's it's very nice. It looks like a good uh, I think it will be very uh, mm -hmm. uh, a very nice addition um, and in a safe addition if that with the, having the roundabout. Uh, in place, which um, which we even discussed at the meeting. It's going to, and we've discussed at multiple meetings um, at the city, uh, just talking when we had the, some of those open forums that we had at City Hall, uh, just looking at the safety options of having a roundabout. And I think the city, from what we you know we've seen during that meeting, has definitely has a commitment to making sure it looks looks great um, and it, it doesn't bring great, any yeah. value down to our to Willoughby Station and. Um, and like we've always said, one of the biggest things we're looking for at that intersection is, is something that's going to be safe for um, our residents, and not only the residents of Willoughby Station, but the residents of Mount Vernon and some of these areas. Um, so I think that roundabout will do that. Yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a challenging intersection there, definitely, mm -hmm. with the railroad tracks, the quiet zone going through there, the preemptive signal link. Uh, one of the things we did look at was a signal light through there, and you know, would all the preemption and everything else tied in there? Yeah. Just, I'll leave it to the traffic engineers on that one. But yeah, it's just that's hard to make it the same way. It's hard to leave it, make it fit in that thing. I think one of the things that 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 I really wanted to take away from my last discussion with um, Pullet Works on this thing was this: What's construction do? Mm -hmm. What does construction do when you have fourteen hundred homes in here, and then you got the the townhomes over here with, mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know, maybe a hundred or so townhomes over here what does that do for us putting 1500 people out here how are we going to how are we going to make that work yeah and that was really one of my concerns it's like well first part of the plan was is to do it in the summer and not impact the school traffic school traffic yeah and the other thing is the way it lays they're able to construct most of the roundabout all together mm -hmm. and not even impact the existing intersection yeah and a lot of it it wasn't going to take a lot and from the plan that we looked at um it wasn't really going to impact too much of the land on mm -hmm. the Willoughby Station side. It was going to impact a little bit of on the other side, adjacent to uh, Willoughby Station. Um, but just from a, getting rid of that hill, like the, everybody knows, from taking trying to take a left hand uh, turn out of Willoughby Station Boulevard on the North Green or South Green Hill, rather, um, it was going to take down that hill there and some of these safety safety provisions that are being built into there. So, yeah. And that's 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 a good point. A lot of this is is grading to to clear the um, the grade there for mm -hmm. the line of sight, improving yeah. that. And I, I think we'll 
we'll see some of the biggest safety improvements just out of the grading in this thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, got a, back on the, the plan here, I got a question from Carolyn. It's the goal of the BLC to approve a plan that would be most beneficial to Willoughby Station, Sydney Terrace residents. Is there any reason that you'd push for anything else? Um, I mean, hopefully, in any any plan that that would that would that people would be willing to support and move forward is going to be in the best interest of the city as a whole on this thing, and it's not not just one area or beneficial to one or the other. It's really um, try to push forth the plan that's going to be beneficial to the city as a whole. That's going to put something in there that's going to bring mm-hmm. value, preserve our property values. Um, speak to safety without trying to overload traffic one way or the other significantly. Mm-hmm. Got one here. It says roundabouts, in my opinion, never work. I used to work where there was an employee and employees of the company were required to take a safety course because someone complained. Everyone ignored the signs and ran them consistently. Well, well, and I, and it, I've seen both things. I've seen comments about that. I've seen it's a, you know a training issue, and a lot of it is going to be something different. It's it a, is it's going to be something thing. different. It's a cultural thing. Um, uh, but I think once you you know you train and people get used to the roundabout traffic and those different things, they'll see it definitely a benefit. But there's going to be positives and negatives if we kept it the same way as it is today, um, an unsafe intersection where you know I know I've personally ran. Um, Motor vehicle accidents there personally. Um, yeah, from your time with from the, my time at the fire department. So, um, it, what we have currently just it needs to be fixed. And we in a lot of the feedback they got, and uh, Public Works will tell you a lot of the feedbacks they they received um, were overly really approved this out of the three. A lot of the different options that were offered, and the traffic engineers even themselves said this is probably the the, the best. Um, uh, plan is to do a roundabout. Yeah, from the safety standpoint, safety standpoint, they were they were really excited about what they could do with this. And, mm-hmm. You know, when we had the when we had the public meetings with town halls on that, um, I could I could see the hesitancy and the doubt and everybody that come in there and the feedback I'd gotten. But in the end, when the when the feedback was taken, I think it was over sixty percent or so mm-hmm. acceptance rate on that thing. So I was I was surprised to see it get to that point. It yeah. Really was, yeah. Well, I th- I think we got most of the questions here. I think there were some comments, but I think I've hit most everything on it. Um, I guess at this point, uh, we may can wrap this thing up a little early and give people yeah. a few minutes of their life. Anybody back. else has any questions out there before we uh, wrap it up? We've got a lot of good questions tonight, though. Yeah. That is... For your first uh, town hall. <laughs> <laughs> first virtual town hall. Yeah. We had no other questions. I, it's probably a better name, but you know, we're just, it sounds good. It's we original. Weren't creative, we weren't creative virtual enough town to, hall. to come up with it, but I um and of course we put a poll out there about the uh, about this. Do you like seeing this format, or do you like something else? And I mean, there's there's obviously advantages to the one on one interaction that you get mm-hmm. in a, a town hall, but there's also the challenges of busy lives, traveling, finding a place to have it, and you know. My problem was is you would do it, and it was always the uh, the attendance would be low, and I, I see the number of people watching watching what we're doing right now, mm-hmm. and this exceeds what we've seen in the past with town halls, and that was that was tying up staff time to get the mm-hmm. facilities, the interaction, and people having to travel, and with this we can do it, and we can record it, we can put it on the website, mm-hmm. which leads me to the next thing. Um, we'll put this recording on the website so you can reference it, and. You know, I, I think it'll be interesting. And, of course, the pictures from the original development will get on there, too. I think it'll be interesting to see if this project does pick up some steam and get moving ahead as to what the final, what finally gets approved, what out, how closely it looks to what we're seeing tonight. Yeah. Well, and just keeping keeping up with what's going on. I know you've been trying to communicate as best as possible um, with these plans and things that are affect district, too. So I think this is, this is a major first step there. And I, uh, I saw uh, Cindy's other comment here. She says, I agree it's a dangerous intersection. I wish there was an easy answer. I, I agree, Cindy. I, I wish there was an easier answer on yeah. it to, to fixing that. And, you know, some of the things that we did see from that intersection coming in originally were some 
kind of paved the way for some other things in the city that have mm-hmm. been really positive. And I've gotten some email questions later on, or excuse me, earlier in the day about Old Leather Dirt Road. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting how the history from what happened there ties into some improvements we see coming there. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and then Amy says, I think it's great. I couldn't have made it otherwise. And I think that's the problem. It's just, it's just hard to get people in mm-hmm. some directions. This is a, and I know not everybody's got Facebook, so that's yep. where we're going to record this. We're going to put this out on the website and mm-hmm. allow comments there as well. Try to go back through these, and if we miss something, I'll try to get answers for those. But I just want to encourage everybody, if you're not subscribed to the newsletter that we put out, um, we'll put the links in here on this and, of course, online where you can subscribe and keep track of what we're doing, what we're offering. We put a lot out on social media too. Mm -hmm. You can follow the page, like the page on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're, um, we're probably pretty active out there and letting people know what's going on and what we're up to. I'll have my calendar section. Um, you know, I just post things where I'm going to be and what I'm involved in just Mm -hmm. to let people know kind of some of the things that are going on in the city. And of course this, like I said, this recording is going to be, um, uploaded to the website as soon as we can uh, get an hour-long video to upload on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is by far the, the, lo- the longest recording that we made. So Yeah. Not seeing any more questions there? Uh, ta-da, see, Dan, be sure the water runoff is evaluated. My house has been awful since the runoff has increased 100 full since built. And give me an idea of the water off. Yep, Dan, that's... That's a good point, too. That's one of the things that has to be addressed. Something has, has changed on that hill, I've noticed, in the last just couple of years, the amount of water that just dumps on brownstone. And I've already talked to the developer on that. That just has to be addressed as part of this as part of this thing if they move forward. Any news on the sidewalks on Belinda City? Oh, well, yeah, we're going citywide. Yeah, we're going to District the, 4 now. <laughs> I know they are moving ahead. I don't... I don't know the timelines. I think they had some some issues they had to go back in there and, and correct. And I apologize I don't have more details, but I know the the project's moving ahead. And it it's I think some of that's very similar to what we see on the town center uh, mm-hmm. trail out here. We've got we moved it apart we've moved it ahead in phases, but we see on the town center trail we've seen phase one, which was to take the sidewalk from uh, Mount Juliet Road to Eagle I guess Park. The, yeah, Eagle Park. Yeah, to Eagle Park, yeah. And then phase two and three, we actually worked together with the grant. We got both in the same time to take it from Eagle Park to here. Mm-hmm. And then the final phase, which is taking it from there to Mount Juliet Elementary, is a phase that we still have to get a funding source for through a grant yeah. or something. But the thing is, with the city moving ahead to get the connectivity from there to Willoughby Station, and mm-hmm. that opens us up for a whole new gamut of things that we can choose from or, or pursue yeah. because of the connectivity and the access to school. There. It yeah. really brings the safety component into that. And I know that's been one thing that's been discussed a lot, and it's been a, a question a lot for like Willoughby Station, I'm sure, and uh, Hickory Hills and Mount Vernon, as well as you know mm-hmm. that access to the Mount Juliet Elementary by uh, sidewalks and greenways and stuff. So that's definitely down the pike from what I've oh, yeah. talked to Andy. So. Yeah, I, I, know, I know it's on the radar, and we I mean, we as a city have just a number of projects going on right now, and it's mm-hmm. it's uh, just keeping them all in the pipeline, keeping them. We have a we have a full time engineer that that pretty much just does project management on these these types of things. There's there's just so much going on inside the uh, the city right now. Yeah. Will says, "Good show." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Will. <laughs> so I, I think. We covered about everything. Um, probably missed something, but we'll circle back and try to get these answered. And like I said, to be posted on the website as basically as soon as we can get it up there. And of course, just follow the page, like the page to keep up with more of these broadcasts. And mm-hmm. we'll have the links down below. If there's nothing else. Right. Anything you want to add, Sean? I just appreciate the invite. Yeah. Uh, coming out to be able to talk on your first uh, town hall. I hope to see a, many more of these in the future. So. Well, I, I think this is, is going to be a successful format going forward. Uh, I'm really enjoying the interaction. I think it's really a, a way that people can be involved and not. And I'm really interested in finding ways to, to, to just maybe do like some simulcast broadcasting with not just Facebook, but bringing in other mediums at the same time. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't, I don't know how well we'll do monitoring comments on more than one 
stream, but yeah, that might be kind of difficult. <laughs> and it, it, well, and like you said, we we had consistently this um, almost this town almost this whole town hall. We had about twenty four to twenty six there, I think, at one point um, viewers. Uh, so it's definitely beneficial uh, giving people this option. Yeah. So, and we of course, you know, I, I shoot videos occasionally too, post them out on the website, and you know. Uh, Oh, one other thing I want to add with the newsletter subscriptions, we're doing a drawing giving away Mount Julietopoly. No, so we'll be yeah. having that drawing Thursday at cut off, and <laughs> of course we're right. we're uh, just choose from subscribers and we're giving stuff away. Yeah. So, all, all right. right, Sean. I, I mean, I appreciate you taking the time out of your night, stepping no away from your family, and doing this. Anytime. I know you you've got years of service to the city. And yeah. I mean, you were you were with the fire department before there was the fire department. I so was, yeah. Organized it's, the volunteers. I mean, yeah. uh, a lot it's, of people a lot of people don't know the story of Sean, but I, I've known you for probably about ten years, maybe. Yeah, ten plus years. Yep, yeah, going back with the volunteers getting that organized, mm-hmm. and that rolled the next thing into the fire department. You yeah. were enrolled that. You you do fire as a career choice now, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's just. Just thank you for what you've done for the oh, city of those years. Well, and that's like we've always talked in the past about. The, it's just been a, it's been a pleasure to be able to give that back to the community. So, all right. Anyway. Well, we will uh, we'll wrap it up seven twenty five and give people uh, five minutes of their life back. There you go. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.